Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. I am super excited about today's crafts because this tutorial is going to be all about making magnetic bookmarks. And I wasn't sure if these were really going to work, but y'all, they are amazing. So look at that. They don't even come off. Um, these are so great. You could use these as gifts. You could use them for yourself. You could use them for teachers. Um, just the possibilities are endless. So let me tell you what you're going to need for today's project. First of all, I'm going to, these are the ones that I experimented with and I am so glad I did that because I have a few tips for you to hopefully make this easier. So, um, what you see is that you need some patterned paper. I chose seven little patterns because this is a five by eight adhesive magnet sheet. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I am sure there are some super awesome quality adhesive magnet sheets out there. I just happened to see these at Walmart um, and I just thought I would try them out. So it looks like this. And they're five by eight, you get two sheets. And I was able to fit seven of these magnets on the sheet. So I gave it a try and these are really inexpensive. I, I wanna say that this was like two-ish dollars or, you know, I think it, they were like, I don't know, they were about $2. So I thought, wow, seriously, um, what a great, what a great little, gift, you know, craft thing that you could do with your kids, you could do by yourself, you could make some gifts. Now the other things you're going to need are, you're, you are going to need some painter's tape. Well, at least I did. So I'll explain to you why you need painter's tape or some kind of masking tape. It's uh, very, very helpful. You are going to need the, um, not the five point blade, but the deep point blade for your Cricut Maker or the Explorer. Um, because you, it does need to cut through the magnetic sheet. Um, you will need some sort of paper trimmer and of course your standard grip mat. Let's um, go ahead and head over to design space and I'll show you how I made these. Um, I'll show you the template that I made and put together already. By the way, on the back side, you'll notice um, there is a little bit of a gap between the top and bottom piece and that just is where the paper is gonna fold. So these are great. I cannot necessarily take credit for these. I've seen these throughout YouTube, but wow, what a great project. So Okay, so here I am in Design Space, and I'm just gonna explain to you what I've already um, previously saved. This is my magnetic bookmark project. And so here's what I have on my canvas. First of all, I have a white rectangle that is a five by eight. Now this will not get cut out. It is simply for template design purposes. And we will be hiding that later in the project. These without the gap are the paper. And these up here are the magnet. Now everything is one inch wide. And then combined in length, it is 4.81 inches. You could make these as wide or as long as you want. The first thing is that I made a square, I mean a rectangle. This represents the magnet. The next thing I did is I went over into shapes and I went and found one of these little borders. I chose the one that looks like a little banner flag and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so it'll be flipped up like this. One of these was 2.36 in height and one inch wide. And I have those backwards. Wow, I, okay, 2.36 wide. Oh, that's right, I turned it, that's why. Okay, so because I turned it um, 90 degrees first, the width and the height are kind of switched. I forgot all about that. And I should know that being a geometry teacher. Then what I did, let me hide those again. Then what I did is I selected it 
I'm gonna move that out of the way for just a minute. I selected it and I did a duplicate. And I kind of put it like right here. And then I'm going to flip it vertically. So it'll look like this. Okay, the next thing I did is I increased the size of my canvas so that I could see. And I put one here and then I put one like this so that there's just literally one row of boxes between the two of those. Okay, I found that was a good size. The next thing I did is I selected both. I went up to a line and I did a line left. And then I hit attach. Okay, so now this is one cohesive deal. So the next thing I did is I brought back up over my box and I placed one here and then I'm going to duplicate that. Now when I originally did this I didn't know how many would fit across but I figured since it was eight wide I could probably get six or seven on there. There we go and I just kind of lined them up like this like little toy soldiers and they're just kind of willy-nilly on there. I've got six. I need one more. Okay, so now what I did is I just moved the box out of the way. Again, I don't really need the box even at this point anymore. I can hide it just to get it out of my way. I'm going to select all of these. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a line top because I want them all to be the same uh, like the same level along the top and along the bottom and then they're kind of overlapping a little bit so I'm going to hit a line and I'm going to do distribute horizontally and what that does is it places them evenly spaced apart now I'm actually going to bring back in my box one more time and I'm going to see how that looks and make sure that it fits width wise I know vertically it's fine but width-wise, I want to make sure that I've got plenty of room. So this is really good. I'm very excited about that. I'm going to hide that box. The next thing I'm going to do is just all of these are t attached individually to their top and bottom counterpart, but I'm going to attach the entire thing. So this is now one cohesive unit, and Design Space will cut this out on the magnet sheet as one thing okay then I what I did is I just chose one of the pieces and in from my layers panel you just need to pick one and I'm gonna duplicate that and it is a separate entity and then I'm going to take it and move it over here just off to the side and now I need to account for the paper now the paper needs to be completely solid so I went over to shapes and I got a square and I made sure that it was just a one by one. Oh, not a one by 11. Fast fingers there. A one by one, and I just brought it and I placed it over the gap. And it's really not aligned. So I'm going to hit uh, select all. I'm going to align center. There we go. And it brings it, so it almost looks like a little bow, actually. So this brings on top. And then I selected all of them again and I'm going to hit weld. Once I had one of these, I then duplicated the image um, seven more times. Okay, and that's how I came up with this. And these don't have to be aligned. They can all be completely independent of each other because I am going to cut all of my strips of paper and I'm going to have them on my mat. Um, I'm gonna kind of separate them a little bit uh, from each other because I want to use different patterns. I, I was using one sheet of paper. I would just trim it out as a five by eight and then I would get these all nice and neat like I did for the magnets. So the magnets are going to print on the magnet sheet and these I'm going to be printing them separately on patterned paper like so. Okay. The other thing is you'll notice I have all of them as um, shaded as a like a dark charcoal gray, which is fine because I'm actually going to show you how you can 
put this all on one mat and then we're going to position everything on the mat so that I can cut one and then I will um, cut the other one and just turn the mat around. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit make. And then it looks like this. So one thing that I have to do is I can't cut them all on the same exact mat because of the different settings. So I'm going to highlight all of these little pieces. I'm going to hit the three little circles. I'm going to move the object and I want to hit new. And I'm just going to change it to any color I want. Doesn't really matter. The colors don't matter. And then for these pieces here, I'm literally going to put them where they are on the, they're like on one inch markers, okay? And I just need seven of them. So I'm going to move these like so. Okay. And I, I, I'm okay with that one there, and I'm okay with that one there. All right. All right, so I'm going to be spacing those out momentarily. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I actually want to come back up here. This is my magnets, and I'm going to be putting the magnet sheet um, up here in the top. And I know it looks a little weird, but because of this overhang right here, I'm at, and I want to make sure I really maximized the amount of magnet sheet that I'm using. So I'm actually going to place my magnets like right here where the one at by one starts. And then you can see here um, it goes a little bit over the eight. Don't worry, we're going from one to almost nine, which is about eight. Then we're also here we've got five so this will work for the magnet that leaves all of this room down here and so you'll notice that i need to come down below six all right so i'm going to come back to the second mat and then i'm going to start repositioning so i need one here and then i'll move another there and i'm going to be cutting my strips just a little bit wider than one inch. And I'm going to keep bringing them down. And one more. And you notice this only fits six, which is totally fine because I'm going to come up here and I'm going to leave one in this position because the magnet sheet is actually sitting right here in this spot. So this piece of paper will not be in the way. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like to put it on the mat. Let's go back to the overhead cam and I'll show you how I put them together on the mat. I'm going to use the same mat. I'm going to run the magnets through first using the D point blade. Then I will switch out the blade back in. These um, will be on the bottom half, and these will need the fine point blade. So I'll have to change out my blades. Okay, so let's go to the other camera. Okay, so I'm just going to use my little paper trimmer here, and I'm going to find, I really just want them to be a little bit more than one. Put this at one and a half. Okay, and then this will be one magnet and it won't catch all of it. It won't be centered. It will be offset like this, but that'll be so neat. Okay, so now I have all of my papers. So when we get our mat, and my mat looks really beat up, but I, I actually kind of like it because I, I did buy some new ones and they're a whole lot stronger, you know, stronger grip. Well, they're, they're new, so the grip is stronger. But, by the way, my magnet sheet is going to go here. So remember I said I was going to put it here. 
And what they found is this moves around even with the strong grip. So that is what I need the painter's tape for. I had placed it on here and it was looking really weird. So I was like, I'm not really sure what's happening. Okay, you know, you may not need this much painter's tape. You may not, you may decide that you're going to use a strong grip mat and not even use. It's kind of puffy. It's like a little pillow there. Okay, so we got that taken care of. And then I'm just going to start placing these. So remember I had one over here. Okay, and these are longer, so it's, it's all good. So I'm going to place one over here. And that will stick down nicely. And then, in fact, let me check my mat really fast. Okay, so I am going to shorten these just a smidge and I'm just going to start placing these down. So I'm going to have one over here and notice that I'm letting them kind of overhang from the one inch block, which is totally fine. because it's literally going to cut out. And this one is probably going to be really, really close. I'm just slightly worried that I might need a bigger piece of that. So I may have to come back and do that one before we cut. And then this one. Now this one, remember the cutting it really isn't going to start to here, so I'm going to let that be a little bit in like that. And I'm going to recut this super fast. Um, and I actually think this is going to work out better. Little happy accidents there. And All right, and I'll use this for something else. Okay. And I think I might, I don't really need to do it, but I think at least right here, that kind of hangs down a little low, so I'm just going to put a little piece of washi tape there just to make sure that it stays down and doesn't get caught in the rollers. Okay, so now what's going to happen is, is I'm going to cut the first mat, and it's going to cut this first, and then we're going to go to the second piece, and then it'll cut this after I change out the blade. So this deep point blade is going to cut this and the fine point blade is going to cut that. Okay, so here we are in design space again and I'm going to go back to this dark charcoal gray color. This is the magnets and so we are going to hit continue. I'm going to find the maker and then I am going to search, I'm going to browse all materials and I am going to just type in magnet and it's the 5 tenths millimeter. Okay. And I'm going to hit done. And then you'll see, and I actually chose more pressure and I found that everything worked just fine once I realized that I had to make sure that the magnet page stayed in place. And so it said to load the deep point blade in clamp B, which I have done. So next we're going to go back to the Cricut and then we're going to load and we're going to go. Okay, so this is my fine point blade and I'm just going to open the housing and I'm going to open it pull this out and I'm just going to set it up here for right now because we're going to need that for the paper and I'm going to take the deep point blade and I'm going to put it in close the gray part of the housing and then close this and it's 
it's nice and tight so it's not gonna fall out and that is what's gonna cut this here okay so now that the magnets are done we're gonna come over here we're going to choose light cardstock because I'm just using some light cardstock I am gonna go change out my fine point blade in just a moment or the deep point blade for the fine point blade in just a second but we want default pressure which is fine and so once I change the blade then we will be able to load and go okay so before we do the next round we are going to take out the deep point blade we will replace the fine point blade and lock the clamp okay so then just like before all of our paper is down and we're just going to load and when prompted we will hit the go button and the paper will print out pretty darn quick okay so funny story i thought that i was outsmarting this magnet paper um here's what i'm thinking for next time First of all, I think that it did a great job all up here. I do think I need to remember to put some painter's tape this way. It would move around. These things would start sliding. And that's because this is actually, you know, a pretty light, um, this, this grip on here is really light. Maybe if I went to my stronger mats that um, it wouldn't do that. But um, I, didn't, I didn't really think about the middle part. So good to know for next time. Well, we'll get that all squared away. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just take off our paper and I'm just going to just bend my mat and start pulling these guys off. I think we've got all the pieces and everybody's in there, yep. Okay, all right, and we'll just move these to our little tabletop trash bin. Okay, so the next thing is obviously I have to pull off the painter's tape. Great. Now another, so the painter's tape tip is valid and important. However, I need to remember if I ever do this again, either use a stronger grip mat for the magnets or put a piece in the middle. So the other thing that I did is I made sure that these, you know, just kind of check the polarity that they, because every once in a while, I don't know about you, but in real life, magnets, they seem to repel each other. So I'm just making sure that each pair that I pick, that it sticks to each other. Okay, so now for the fun part. The fun part, we literally just pull off the sticker backing. And then we're going to place that. And I like to get it to where I can line, I line it up from side to side and then I like to see where the V is and then I just kind of push the V down into position before pressing the whole thing down. Okay, so there's one and the second one. Okay, I think I got this one a little off. Okay, well this one definitely is gonna have to be redone. Okay, so, because you should see a little gap like that. So I'm actually gonna have to redo that one. That's okay, I got plenty of paper. It's just paper, guys. It's all right, it's all good. So the next thing, the other thing you could do is take off the tape and put them, but then you can't see that you have a gap. So you, you do need to be seeing that you have the gap like this. Okay, so I think this time I will Go like 
this. And then I'm just going to double check. Yeah. Okay. So I just needed to have a different view perspective. All right, perfect. You can see the gap of paper and then these just fold like this. And I'm so excited because they do work. All right, so I am just going to finish these up really quick and then we will admire all of them together. So here is the final product. We, we have these that I had previously made. And then I have these guys. Actually, that one over there. So these are the ones that I made this evening, minus the one that I, um, you know, centered incorrectly and have to redo. But these are just so great. You could use any theme. You could use any color. You could also uh, put some vinyl over these and personalize them even more. The possibilities are absolutely endless. I hope this video was inspiring and informative for you. And until the next video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. But most importantly, go out and craft a little pizzazz into every day. So until next time, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.